A schema for horizontal dials is a set of instructions used to construct horizontal sundials using compass and straightedge construction techniques, which were widely used in Europe from the late 15th century to the late 19th century. The common horizontal sundial is a geometric projection of an equatorial sundial onto a horizontal plane. The special properties of the polar pointing gnomon, axial gnomon were first known to the Moorish astronomer Abdul Hassan Ali in the early 13th century, and this led the way to the dial plates, with which we are familiar, dial plates where the style and hour lines have a common root. Through the centuries, artisans have used different methods to mark up the hour lines sundials using the methods that were familiar to them. In addition, the topic has fascinated mathematicians and become a topic of study. Graphical projection was once commonly taught, though this has been superseded by trigonometry, logarithms, slide rules, and computers, which made arithmetical calculations increasingly trivial. Graphical projection was once the mainstream method for laying out a sundial but has been sidelined and is now only of academic interest. The first known document in English describing a schema for graphical projection was published in Scotland in 1440, leading to a series of distinct schema for horizontal dials each with characteristics that suited the target latitude and construction method of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Context The art of sundial design is to produce a dial that accurately displays local time. Sundial designers have also been fascinated by the mathematics of the dial and possible new ways of displaying the information. Modern dialing started in the 10th century when Arab astronomers made the great discovery that a gnomon parallel to the Earth's axis will produce sundials whose hour lines show equal hours or legal hours on any day of the year. The dial of Ibn al Shatir in the Umayyad Mosque in Damascus is the oldest dial of this type. Dials of this type appeared in Austria and Germany in the 1440s. A dial plate can be laid out by a pragmatic approach, observing and marking a shadow at regular intervals throughout the day on each day of the year. If the latitude is known, the dial plate can be laid out using geometrical construction techniques which rely on projection geometry, or by calculation using the known formulas and trigonometric tables, usually using logarithms, or slide rules, or more recently, computers or mobile phones. Linear algebra has provided a useful language to describe the transformations. A sundial schema uses a compass and a straight edge to firstly to derive the essential angles for that latitude, then to use this to draw the hour lines on the dial plate. In modern terminology this would mean that graphical techniques were used to derive sin x and m tan y display style m tan y and from it sin x tan y display style sin x tan y topic basic calculation using a large sheet of paper Starting at the bottom a horizontal line is drawn, and a vertical one up the center. Where they cross is becomes the origin O, the foot of the gnomon. A horizontal line draw a line which fixes the size of the dial. Where it crosses the center line is an important construction point F A construction line is drawn upwards from O at the angle of latitude. Using a square, drop a line a line from F through the construction line is drawn so they cross at right angles. That point E, is an important construction point. To be precise it is the line Fe that is important as it is length sin phi Using compasses, or dividers the length Fe was copied upwards in the center line from F. The new construction point is called G. The construction lines and Fe are erased. Such geometric constructions were well known and remained part of the high school, UK grammar school curriculum until the new maths revolution in the 1970s. The schema shown above was used in 1525 from an earlier work 1440 by Durer is still used today. The simpler schema were more suitable for dials designed for the lower latitudes, requiring a narrow sheet of paper for the construction than those intended for the higher latitudes. This prompted the quest for other constructions. Topic: Horizontal dials. The first part of the process is common to many methods. 
It establishes a point on the north-south line that is Sin Phi from the meridian line. Early Scottish method 1440, Durer 1525, Rohr 1965. Start with the basic method shown above From G A series of lines, 15 degrees apart are drawn, long enough so they cross the line through F. These mark the hour points 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. The center of the dial is at the bottom, point O. The line drawn from each of these hour point to O will be the hour line on the finished dial. The significant problem is the width of the paper needed in the higher latitudes. Topic: <inaudible> Benedetti, 1574. Benedetti, an impoverished nobleman, worked as a mathematician at the court of Savola. His book which describes this method was De Nomonum Umbrarumque Salarium USU published in 1574. It describes a method for displaying the legal hours, that is equal hours as we use today, while most people still used unequal hours which divided the hours of daylight into twelve equal hours but they would change as the year progressed. Benedetti's method divides the quadrant into 15 degree segments. Two construction are made, a parallel horizontal line that defines the tan H distances, and a mnemonic polar line GT which represents sin phi. Draw a quadrant GRB, with 15 degree segments. GR is horizontal. A parallel horizontal line is drawn from PE, and ticks made where it bisects the 15 degrees rays. GX is the latitude. T is the crossing point with PE. GTE is the mnemonic triangle. The length gt is copied to the bottom of e giving the point f. The hour lines are drawn from f, and the dial is complete. Benedetti included instructions for drawing a point gnomon so unequal hours could be plotted. Clavius <coughs> <coughs> method Fabica et usus instrumenti ad horologiorum descriptionum, Rome, Italy. The Clavius method looks at a quarter of the dial. It views the horizontal and the perpendicular plane to the polar axis as two rectangles hinged around the top edge of both dials. The polar axis will be at phi degrees to the polar axis, and the hour lines will be equispaced on the polar plane and equatorial dial, 15 degrees. Hour points on the polar plane will connect to the matching point on the horizontal plane. The horizontal hour lines are plotted to the origin. Draw the nomomic triangle, lying on it hypotenuse. On the small side, draw a equatorial square, with 15 degrees hour markings. The dial plate is constructed with compasses taking its sizes from the triangle. The hour lines 12, 3, and 6 are known. The hour lines 1 and 2 are taken from the side of the square. A diagonal is taken from 12 to 6, and lines parallel to this drawn through 1 and 2, giving 5 and 4. The morning dial is a reflection of this. Topic: <inaudible> Stirrups method, 1652. From GA series of lines, 15 degrees apart are drawn long enough so they cross the line through F. These mark the hour points 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3. The center of the dial is at the bottom, point O. The line drawn from each of these hour point to O will be the hour line on the finished dial. <laughs> Bettini method The Jesuit Mario Bettini penned a method which was posthumously published in the book Recreationum Mathematicarum Apiaria Novissima 1660. Draw the nyonomic triangle with the hypotenuse against the meridian line, and phi to the bottom, see the other point call M, the right angle call G. A horizontal line is drawn through M, this is the equinoctial. A circle centered in M with a radius MG is drawn. G2 and G3 are the intersections of the circle and meridian. In the top quadrants, points are marked each 30 degrees. Two are named P, Q. Construction lines are drawn from G2 and G3 through P and Q. The intersections with the equinoctial are marked. To finish the hour lines are drawn through these points from C, and the dial squared off. Bettini's method 1660. 
Topic: Leyborn 1669. William Leyborn published his Art of Dialing in 1669, a with it a six-stage method. His description relies heavily on the term line of chords, for which a modern dialist substitutes a protractor. The line of chords was a scale found on the sector which was used in conjunction with a set of dividers or compasses. It was still used by navigators up to the end of the 19th century. Draw a circle, and its two cardinal diameters, EW, and SN top to bottom. O is their crossing point or origin. Using a scale of chords or protractor, lay off two lines, 0A, that is 52 degrees from OS, and 0B, that is 52 degrees from AO, they will be at right angles. The points, A and B, are important. With a straight edge draw a line connect E with A. It cuts SN the meridian line at P, which is called the pole of the world. Now connect E to A. It connects A. This point is important as it is where the meridian crosses the equinoctial circle. The points E, A, and W lie on the equinoctial circle. The next task is to use this information to locate the center and to draw the circle. Use a construction line to join A and W at the center point, raise a line at right angles. Where it cuts the SN the meridian will be C, the center of the equinoctial circle. Use C to draw an arc from E to W, it will pass through A. There is now a semicircle passing through E and W, and the equinoctial arc passing through E and W divide the semicircle into 12 equal parts, i.e. 15 degrees angles. Mark with a construction point. A ruler joins O with the points on the semicircle. These lines cut the equinoctial arc, a series of unequal points markers are created. A ruler from P the pole of the world takes a line from these markers back over the semicircle. Where it cuts it will be the hour point. These hour points are unequally spaced. The hour lines are drawn from each of these hour points to O the origin. The origin is the foot of the style which is cut at 52 degrees. Topic Ozanam's method, 1673; Mayall, 1938. This method requires a far smaller piece of paper, a great advantage for higher latitudes. From G, a series of lines, 15 degrees apart, are drawn long enough so they cross the line through F. These mark the hour points 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, and represent the points tan h sin phi display style tan h sin phi the center of the dial is at the bottom point o the line drawn from each of these hour point to o will be the hour line on the finished dial the lines through 9 and 3 are extended to the wee line and a line dropped orthogonally from 9 and 3 to the wee line call the crossing points w and e from W and E two more lines are drawn 15 degrees apart, these cut the verticals creating the hour points 7, 8 and 4, 5. Lines taken from 0 to these hour points are the hour lines on the final dial. Encyclopedia method This method uses the properties of chords to establish distance, M sin theta display style M sin theta in the top quadrant and then transfers this distance into the bottom quadrant so that sin phi sin theta display style sin phi sin theta is established again a transfer of this measure to the chords in the top quadrant the final lines establish the formula tan Kappa equals display style tan kappa equals sin theta sin phi cos theta display style sin theta sin phi over cos theta equals tan theta sin phi display style tan theta sin phi this is then transferred by symmetry to all quadrants. It was used in the Encyclopædia Britannica 1st edition 1771, 6th edition 1823. 
The gnomon is drawn first against the north-south line. In doing so, a diameter at phi degrees to the vertical is drawn, its reflection will also be needed. The circumference is marked off at 15 degrees intervals in the top quadrants. Chords parallel to the horizontal are drawn the length of these chords will be sin theta. The measurement of each chord is transferred to form a scale along the lower radiuses. When joined these points form a series of parallel lines that are sin theta, sin phi in length. These measurements are transferred up to the chord. The final hour lines are drawn from the origins through these crossing points. Tan kappa equals display style tan kappa equals sin theta sin phi cos theta display style sin theta sin phi over cos theta equals tan theta sin phi display style tan theta sin phi topic De Sella's 1760 1790 Wa method 1973 The Dom Francois Bedos de Sella's method 1760 otherwise known as the Wa method 1973 from GA series of lines 15 degrees apart are drawn long enough so they cross the line through F these mark the hour points 9 10 11 12 1 2 3 if you take just 3 and represent the points Tan H sin phi display style tan H sin phi. The center of the dial is at the bottom point O. The line drawn from each of these hour point to O will be the hour line on the finished dial. If the paper is large enough, the method above works from seven until twelve, and twelve until five, and the values before and after six are calculated through symmetry. However, there is another way of marking up seven and eight, and four and five. Call the point where 3 crosses the line R, and a drop a line at right angles to the baseline. Call that point W. Use a construction line to join W and F. Wa calls the crossing points with the hours lines K, L, M. Using compasses or dividers, add two more points to this line N and P, so that the distance is Mn. <laughs> ML, and MP MK. The missing hour lines are drawn from O through N and through P. The construction lines are erased. Topic: <laughs> Nicholson's method, 1825. This method first appeared in Peter Nicholson's A Popular Course of Pure and Mixed Mathematics in 1825. It was copied by School World in June 1903, then in Kenneth Lynch's, Sundial and Spheres 1971. It starts by drawing the well-known triangle, and takes the vertices to draw two circles at radius ob sin phi and ab tan phi. The 15 degrees lines are drawn, intersecting these circles. Lines are taken horizontally, and vertically from these circles and their intersection point ob sin t, ab cos t is on the hour line. That is tan kappa equals ob sin t, a b cos t which resolves to sin phi. Tan t. Draw the ns line, and the eu line crossing at the origin o at a convenient point in the first quadrant join the axes with a line set at the target angle. This forms the basic triangle oab. Set the compasses at length ob and inscribe a circle. Set the compasses on ab and inscribe a concentric circle. On both of these circles mark out the 15 degrees angles. Taking the lines vertically from the inner circle, and horizontally from the outer circle, mark each of the intersections. These are on the hour lines. Connect the intersection points to the origin. <laughs> Foster Searle's dialing scales A right angle is drawn on the dial face and the latitude scale is laid against the x-axis. The target latitude point is marked across onto the dial face. The hour scale is placed from this point to the noon line conventionally, the zero point is on the noon line. Each of the hour points is copied over to the dial face, and this procedure is repeated, giving the hours both sides of noon. A straight edge is used to connect these points to the origin, thus drawing the hour lines for that location. 
a vertical line from the target latitude point, and a horizontal line through the noon point will bisect at the 3 hour marker. The style will be at the same angle as the latitude. Safia as Safia. This was an early and convenient method to use if you had access to an astrolabe as many astrologers and mathematicians of the time would have had. The method involved copying the projections of the celestial sphere onto a plane surface. A vertical line was drawn with a line at the angle of the latitude drawn on the bisection of the vertical with the celestial sphere. See also London dial Schema for vertical declining dials Notes <laughs> 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 <laughs>